It's not something theoretical. Sounds like me, okay? So, the main, the main word in this debate would be Arabic. Why Quran was delivered in Arabic language? So this is the first one, is why. The second one would be what? So let me clean it up here. So this is why. The second one would be, okay. When we say miracle, I'm not gonna list them. When I say a miracle, what's the advantage to me, okay, as what? Well, as non-Arabic person. What's the advantage of it? If this, the source is in Arabic, so how I'm gonna claim this is a miracle? This is a challenge to humanity. Okay, so we start from the first one is why Arabic? This is very important because you might get into debates or you might have questions. Uh, you always say Quran is a miracle. Why? You tell me, go read. Oh, I do not understand anything in Arabic. How am I going to know it's a miracle? What's the advantage? How am I going to prove it? Is it not? So here, we start from the first question. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why did he choose Arabic language for Quran? Because everyone knows that Quran is what? Is the last miracle of the Prophet, Mishak. It's the last miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the last miracle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this miracle is going to be what? In a good preservation. No one is going to be tampering with. No one is going to have different versions of the Quran. No one is going to claim, hey, I was able to create something similar to the Quran. So now I have a question for you and I'm looking for your answers before I start talking about it. What, what's your fee, you know, opinion? Why do we have Quran delivered in Arabic? The word of God. Why it is in Arabic? Not in other language. Yes. The Arabic is very detailed language. Detailed language, okay. Only Arabic is detailed? Yeah, it's the most detailed language. Okay. When you say detailed, what do you mean? There's a word for everything. There's a word for everything. Yeah. Back then or now? Back then. Okay. So maybe you mean, guys, Arabic, first of all, we say it is deep. Deep language. So, I'm going to put here, remove this, just let's do it. So I'm going to clean up. So we have Arabic, we said why, and also we said, okay, can I considered okay? I means what here? Can a none Arabic check person consider it what a miracle right 
This we'll talk about later on. Why I'm doing that? Good? So now, why Arabic? First, Arabic is deep. Deep, or you can say what? Profound. Second, it is old language. One of the oldest on earth. Old language. We're going to talk about the rest, but let's go talk about deep and the profound. What do I mean by deep and profound? Why Arabic is deep and profound? Because it has a deep meaning. It has deep meanings and it has a structure. So from three letters, you can create so many meanings. Example, you want, to you want me to show you some examples? So let's take the three letters, for instance. So we're talking about here what? Number one. So if I take number one and I take a ba ra in Arabic, this is ain uba ra. How many letters? Three letters. This here, I can write it what? One word, a ba ra. Good? Three letters only, Mshak. How many? Words I can get out of this letter, three letters. How many you think? You want me to give you examples? You want me to give you examples? I'll give you examples. See, from this word, I can say Ibra. What's Ibra? Means wisdom. Ibra means wisdom. I can say Abra. What does it mean? A tear. Ya qatil al abarat, we say for Imam Hussein. Al abarat. Mish al ibarat, al abarat. Also, I can say ibara. I can say abara. I can say abara. I can say ma'bar. I can say ubur. <laughs> I can say so many things from what? Three letters. Why? Because the Arabic language in this situation works the following. What does abara mean? They say abara, which is the three letters, means to move from one location to another. Good? So the Arab people, they said, we call this tear abra. Why? Because it goes from your eye all the way down. We call it Abra. Uh, what about Ibra? Because the lessons learned goes from what happened to your understanding. So we call it what? Ibra. We, ibara. Ibara means a phrase, for instance. Ibara. Or Ta'bir. Or Ibarat. They say because you understand the meaning, it goes from the letters into your imagination and understanding. Abara to move. Ma'bar is where it's a location. And then just Abara. So, so all has to do with same action. Three letters. And this is regular language. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, they claim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to send something immortal, and according to Ahl al-Bayt, Quran is like sun and moon. يعني يجري مجرى الشمس والقمر. Okay? See, if I look at the, Quran, the sunset, sunset and what? Sun, rise. No matter how often you see them, you are always what? Attracted to them. Always you see a beautiful sky. Always you want to take a picture if you have time. Because sometimes we are either sleepy or busy at work. But every one of us, when he or she goes to a park and seeing the sun is setting or rising, you like to enjoy the moment, isn't it? 
You don't feel it is enough. Full of attraction. There is always different shape of a cloud, different shape of temp, you know, things, shape, different temperature. Ahl al-Bayt, they told us, Quran will never get old. It is like the movement of, uh, of the sun and moon. Look now at the moon. Every time you look at the moon, you say, SubhanAllah. You said SubhanAllah last month. <laughs> there is always some attraction. It's a sign from God. Okay? Quran, you read the Quran, you read the ayah, you understand a meaning. You read the second time in different atmosphere, different you know, understanding. There's something meaning, different meaning. And you remember when we talk about Surah al nafathat fil Uqad, I, I mean Surah al falaq and al nafathat how many meanings we got? We spend like one hour discussing it. What's an nafathat Why nafatha? Why not nafakha? Why al Uqad? What's Uqad? And ah, MashaAllah, never ending. So now you look at some ayat in the Quran, you can see deeper meanings. And some of that deeper meaning could be like science, hidden facts. Science, hidden what? Scientific facts. You do not pay attention to it. You don't pay attention. يعني هلا مثلا القرآن بيجي بيقول إذا الشمس كورت يعني this this sun at a point is gonna be what? It's gonna its light is gonna perish. Okay, how did the Prophet know? Why did he talk about the sun? Man, what, what's the maximum technologies that the Prophet had? Sword, camel, sheep, tent, desert. Why he cares about the, the, the fate of the sun? Why? Why? Why he predicted that? Or when the Quran said, وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا مَحْفُوظًا We made the, uh, like a shield, Surrounding what? Earth. Now what do we call this? Atmosphere. And because of that nice atmosphere, we are saved and protected from? Exactly. Uh, why did he care about it? Or when he talked about أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا And everything was one unit. One mass and got ripped off or exploded. And because of water, you see living things. Hmm. Why? And guess what? Now if you are searching for life, what do we look for in other planet? Water. For Arabic people, they have their own understanding. Little bit of advance, advancement, we say, no, this is not that primitive. It has what? Deeper meaning. Another maybe generation will understand what? Totally something else. That will tell you Arabic language is what? It is deep. And this is very important, brothers and sisters. When you are writing a constitution, and it is so simple, and it is only talking about certain event, at a point, this constitution, you put it on the shelf. Why? Because, let's say, a constitution is discussing Hey, how to ride a horse? And what happens if you have a, a horse problem? خلصنا دان ما عش في عنا horses. Islam was not that specific. It gave you uh, stories you learn from. It talked to you about certain event happened, you know, the, in the time of the Prophet. But it made its statement what full of. Um, Deep meaning and indicators. Even in long time ago when the Mufassir, the Mufassir is the one who explained the Quran, you see them fighting. It means this. No, it means that. Or it means that. Why? Because it could have so many meaning. But when it comes to critical things like at tawheed no question about it. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَّ but, and this is because it's a core belief. Core belief, you don't question it. It's very clear cut. I'm talking about details. Opposite to Christianity, if you ask, you know, the Christian people, prove to me that God is a three in your Bible. 
Oh, it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay, approve to me that Jesus approved this Bible. Okay, it was not written on his time. In Islam, when it comes to core things, salah, very clear. You have to pray. Allah, details in fuqh. Psalm, clear. Hajj, zak, anything that is critical, you see it mentioned in the Quran in a very simple way. But when it comes to certain legislations, you see sometimes there is a wisdom to give it what? Several way of understanding. And that's why we have in Quran something we call it muhkam wa mutashabah, which inshallah we'll discuss later on. Muhkam and mutashabah. Okay? Uh, another thing, when it comes to Quran, you see sometimes ayat, if you do not understand the event, why it happened, or certain mufassireen is talking about it, you get lost. You get lost, okay? But yet, it is not related only to that event, which inshallah we'll discuss later on. We call it Asbab al-Nuzul. Asbab al-Nuzul. So here, the language of Arabic by itself, it is what? It is deep, profound, and rather than using the word uh, detailed, I want to say what? Rich, descriptive. Descriptive. In Arabic, you can get lots of descriptions. English language, for instance, it's limited. English language is good for science. He, she, it, they are, okay, some words here. You know, like, and even, even the way you say Arabic is very straightforward. In Arabic, this is always ta, isn't it? Ta. This is always a. Okay, you might have a little bit problem to say whether it's ta, tu, but it's ta. Come to English, okay? English. This is what? Deer. Good? Okay, deer. Why? E, E will make it deer. Good. Then you get him another word. This is what? Deer. Yeah, Habibi, this is deer and this is deer. How, how do you want me to write it? <laughs> In Arabic, ta is different than ta. Totally different. Taib, it illu ya ammi deer, deer. Good? So E A R, it is what? Deer. Another thing will be deer, will be what? Beer. Okay. So this will be what? <laughs> you ruined the English. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> so why this is deer, this is beer? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue, okay? So, I was giving an example today, okay? So like in English, CH would be what? Usually, sh. Like what? Chain, for instance, good? Chain, good? CH, a chain. Oh, so what about CH? <laughs> chemistry, can you say chemistry? Chemistry. Can you say character or character? Why? I do not know. I swear I do not know. But it is this way. In Arabic, no. In Arabic, if you are reading Quran, ba is ba. Okay? It's not going to be ta. <laughs> it's ha is ha. You cannot make it kha. It's your problem if you say kha. Okay, you cannot say Bismillah ar-Rahman, ya Habibi, like, hey, 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 this is ha. Okay, you cannot make ta, ta, though they are very close. And this is the beauty of Arabic. Okay, straightforward. You, can, you do not get confused. Okay, so this is just a joke, okay? So Arabic language, no, it's not like that. It has a root, and that root, the root of the word, I can derive from a different words. And yet, if you go to the etymology of the word, it is only three letters. And I gave you some example. You remember when we discussed a sahar last meeting? We said sahar. Sahar. This is a three letters. Sa, ha, ra. This is the 
ماجيك سحر could be سحر means سحور before uh, فجر time we call it سحور بالأسحار وبالأسحار هم يستغفرون it's مستحب to make استغفار 70 times you know in your صلاة الليل uh, or uh, if you cannot pray Salat al-Layl, at least, ya akhi, say astaghfirullah. Don't, do not just be careless about, you know, waking up at night. That's the whole idea. So, sahar has so many meanings. Sahar, 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 bayna sahri wa nahri is this portion. Three, four meanings because of three letters. And just name it, more than that. So, this is the Arabic language. So, this is one of the advantage, one of the advantage, advantages of using what? or relying on Arabic language. Second, because it's an old language, Arabic language is very old. And when a language is very old, it's not easy to get displaced. So now if you look, and even nowadays, the fourth import, as I remember, the fourth, as I remember, the fourth important language on earth is what? I think the fourth is? Arabic language. The most spoken English on earth is what? Chinese. One billion. <laughs> By nation, I'm saying. <laughs> One nation. Okay. The most known important language on earth is Arabic. Why? 300 million people, they speak Arabic. Still, the language is very active. Still, you use it for religion. Still, you are printing books and writing in Arabic. Not just that. Any other Muslims, they do their best to study what? Arabic. community. You will see non-Lebanese people learning Arabic more than Lebanese people. Why? This is something we have to discuss later on. So Arabic language is important language, fourth important language, as I remember. So, and there is a day in the United Nations, they call it what? Arabic day. Okay? To show you how powerful is Arabic language, to show you how powerful. I can write a sentence. What's a sentence in English? It has to have what? A complete sentence has to have what? A verb, a noun. So uh, you cannot say I. Is that a, a full sentence? I what? I what? iPhone. I. <laughs> you say I ate an apple. Okay, complete sentence. Done. In Arabic, I don't have to have a sentence like that. I can have one word as a sentence. One word. Example, in the Quran, in the Quran, we have this word. Ah, nul, zi, mu, anul zi mu, kuha wa antum laha karihun. I don't want to write it because I don't want to translate it. Anul zi mu kumuha, anul zi mu kumuha. That's one word. Yani, should we force it upon you to believe? Should I force you? That's one word, that's one word. فَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمُ فَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمُ That means, okay, we made you a drink from it. فَأَسْقَيْنَاكُمُ Done. Okay. Just like sometimes you are listening to translations, the guy is talking, 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 and you tell him in Arabic, what did he say? Uh, two words. <laughs> like after one minute. <laughs> you see that? Something. I've been talking for like one minute. Translated two words. Okay. It's enough. So this is the power of language. So it's not any ordinary. It's opposite, by the way, to Aramaic language. Aramaic language is more limited. The language of Jesus, it's more limited. It has less descriptions and less power. In parallel with Arabic, we have Hebrew. It's like from source, same source. So we have similar words. I don't want to get into that subject, but an example. 
we have ilah ilah in arabic in english would be what what's the ilah ilah god in hebrew iloh ilah they call it what iloh sabbat sabbat nahnu nahnu okay very similar words you see different action but similar word good but now the question would be sheikh okay i got a you know arabic is good powerful blah blah but why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose the arabic did he choose it just because of the uh, terminologies just because of the word just because of the vowel just because of the language just because of linguistic reasons or no also behind that language there is an important culture there are some other factors related to the language example as an arabic person what's the difference between arabic and other people in the area i'm gonna go over this quickly because we are running out of time Arabic people, they did not have, in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they had no civilization. The money, the currency, okay, was not their currency. They used to get it from where other empires, holy coins, yani, dinar or dirham. Dinar means gold, dirham means what? Silver. And they say every 10 darahim will equal to one dinar at a point so they say even that money arabic arabic people they did not know how to do or they were not interested in it who in the time of imam zayn al-abideen al-imam zayn al-abideen or some other imams suggested to for the bani umayyah to start printing their own printing or minting whatever you know to mint their own what currency and that's why later on you start seeing a currency. I can show you something from Bani Umayyah time. You see Quran on it. And you say, uh, you see, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. It's like 1,300 years old. It's very impressive. And this is some scholars, they use it to tell you who told you it's haram to touch the word of uh, Allah. But the currency used to have Quran on it. Imagine before paying, let me go make wudu, come back. <laughs> That's some scholar's argument. If, if it is, they, because they have, we have an opinion, if it's not written in the Quran, who told you it's a problem to touch? This is different opinion now, okay? And what's their evidence? They say one of the reasons, in addition, I don't have authentic hadith to prevent me from touching it. People, they used to carry currency that had Quran on it no one said yeah you know let me get a napkin we don't have this so we do it out of respect but you follow your scholar there's a big difference between history and your scholar opinion yeah, and there is a big difference between googling something that you like and your doctor is telling you no you take this medication go to another doctor but do not make your body you know a lab okay because you have only one body. Okay, now, back to the idea. Arab people, they did not have any civilization. And they were considered the most ignorant people when it comes to knowledge. If they want to ask someone about knowledge, they used to go to Christians and Jews to learn about what happened in previous histories. And so, so many of them, they used to to worship idols, to show you how ignorant they are. Imagine you create an idol out of dates. Once you are hungry, you go eat it. It's like you create a democratic system. Once you don't like it, you go destroy it. We're not talking politics. Okay? So Arab people, the same thing. But different ideas, different centuries. Okay? So here... The Arab, they look at it, hey, what did you invent? Oh, I have poetry. Yeah, Habibi, so what? Yani poetry is going to build a civilization. Okay? And more than that, Arab people, especially I'm talking about Quraysh. Quraysh is the highest tribe 
big, big shot tribe. Quraysh, most of them, they used to depend on what? On trading. They are very smart people when it comes to trading. And that's why when they got the civilization, they were able to manage it. Okay? And now we talk, oh yeah, but they are into it. They know how to deal with people. And they, they used to be one unit. And this is one of the reasons they call it Quraysh, according to some historian. It's Quraysh like from Quraysh. Quraysh could be a shark or something like this. But they say Quraysh, it was different than any other Arabic tribe. They used to be one unit and they did not allow any fight among them. One unit, strong. And that's why when Muhammad وسلم, showed up, they did not kill him. They, it took them a while, more than like 10, 13 years after he declared he's the prophet. And then they had to gather together and the 12 people decided to go to his house and uh, kill him. 12. And everyone is from different the tribe. Killing someone, it was a big deal. This is in history. But when it comes to technology, to books, they used to refer to, to creating careers, uh, always they don't do this. No, it's not our job. It's for our servant or other people. We don't touch kind of such careers. And they always are drunk, okay, some of them. So you look at it, so why Islam picked them? Oh, because they had some other advantages. What are those? Look, I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm not sure how much time we have left. Because it's a big subject and we have to debate together. I said, you know, it's a debate. But it happened, I, I am a little bit, you know, went into talking. You want to understand the nature of Arabic people is very important in history. To understand why those, why God selected this geographical area with its culture and language. Or oh, they had something special. The Arab people, they had something special. One of it, which is the negative one, they were very ignorant. They had no knowledge. And all of a sudden, among them, a person giving you knowledge that till now, we try to understand and figure out and discover and explore. Ah, oh, that's a challenge. That's why the Quran said in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال يعني هيدا الترايب في ضلال مبين يعني they know nothing man they were misguided clearly misguided الأميين we have two opinions means they are illiterate Another meaning they say, al ummiyin related to Umm Al-Qura. It's not our subject now. And that's why we have a bigger question. Was the Prophet illiterate or no? He's related to Umm Al-Qura. It's a big argument. It's not the time for it. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ And he's like, from you. So how, where did he get this knowledge? And when he used to talk about something, some people from Quraysh used to refer to Ahl Al-Kitab. Hey, is he right? Where did he get this information from? I know this guy, he never read. He never wrote anything. Where did he get his information from? And how come it's matching certain details in their books? They were, they were shocked. That's one thing. So this is negative thing. Islam took advantage of it. Why? Islam was able to show you that through the darkest age in humanity, I was able to send light that transferred their darkness into a bright civilization that challenged so many empires in the world. It's impossible. If you see how exponentially Islam was able to move them from ignorance into technology and science, it's amazing. It's amazing. Imagine Islam right away said, oh, it is wajib on you to get educated. 
let me let me summarize. This is a big subject. I don't know if we can finish it today. What's in Arabic uh, culture? S superstitious. Uh, if you have a problem, get the uh, evil eye. You know, oh, it's evil eye, jinn. If you are creative, he is. He went to a place called uh, jinn, okay, or uh, abqar. That's why they call him abqari. Because over there, somehow the jinn, you know, gave him a formula. He came back, mashallah, he's, he's genius. They believed in superstition. <laughs> they believe in the uh, eye, the color that we put now. It's, it's, it's naive, it's naive idea. It's not Islamic, okay? You want to protect yourself, say, Bismillah, mashallah. Don't bring me this kharzi zara, you know? We don't believe in it. This is from their time and before even Asr al-Jahili. We call them Al-Asr Al-Jahili. Al-Jahili means ignorant. Okay, ignorant people, ignorance, the noun. Uh, people, they used to worship idols. They used to get drunk. M a man used to get married sometimes to unlimited wives. They used to uh, um, uh, loot other tribes. They used to kill because of water or because of a nice area. They used to... Uh, some a small percentage of Arab people, small percentage, if there is a, if he got a dar, if he got a dar, he used to bury her alive. Islam said, hey, what are you doing? Not all Arab, small amount. Allah, some people, they say, oh, those Arab, no, 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 impossible. Then there will be no one, you know, uh, after that. No more moms. Uh, so they used to, um, have weird things. Uh, you are sick, go to this statue or hubal or whatever. You know, every house has his own hubal thing. Pay money to hubal. If you want to slaughter an animal, slaughter it in the name of hubal or that statue. So you, and who's stealing all this? The people responsible of hubal. Okay. So, and they used to believe in Amen. So if they are going to a trade and the birds fly to the left, uh-oh, I have to go home, this is bad. Imagine now you have work and all of a sudden you see pigeon going left side and you know what, I'm calling in sick. Okay, they used to believe in so many things, in nafathati fil uqad, in magic, black magic, hey, everything is based on spiritual, or not spiritual, superstitious. Imagine now you are one of those. You stand up, you tell them, guys, this is wrong. That you believe in is just a statue. See here, I destroyed. What a big deal. You killed their business. <laughs> not just their aqidah. You also destroy their, you did not just destroy their superstitious. Do you destroy? later on was the winner he came to Kaaba and he put Imam Ali السلام, on his shoulder to go up and get rid of those statues imagine you by yourself you are against their superstitious you are against their asnam you are against their non-logical thinking you are against their immoral behavior the society was full of alcohol. Islam said, no. The Sahaba right away stopped the alcohol. Where does it happen? Where does it happen? Arab people, why they used to get so much into alcohol? One of the reasons. Because their well water was not tasty. If you go taste Zamzam, Zamzam by itself, it has special taste. So the Arab, to order to break that taste and to change it, they used to add to it what? Raisin. Raisin. It give it better taste. Okay? But if it is hot and you keep that raisin socked in that water, within like a couple of days, what's going to happen to that water? Will be converted to alcohol. 
and that's we call it nabid. What's nabid? Yambo the she. Yani you add to it this stuff till it becomes what. Uh, sometimes the nabid will not be alcoholic. Sometimes no, it will reach alcoholic level because of ethanol. You know uh, how do we make uh, vinegar? First, it is khamar. Then, after like 40 days or more, it becomes what vinegar. Okay, so those they get used to it. They got drunk. Imagine those people. To them, it's like daily coffee stuff. <laughs> okay? Daily stuff. Always a drunk. They are not responsible. Ijal Islam, right away, what did it say? Innama al khamru wal maysaru rijsum min amal al shaytan fajtanibu. Fajtanibu, shu yani? Fajtanib al shay, shu yani? Yani, stay away. Some people they say, Shaykh, see, it says Fashtanibu. Did not say haram. Ya Habibi, it's worse than haram. Because if there is a tree, I tell you, don't eat from it. You can play around it. You can sleep beneath that tree. You can play Uno, you know, under a advertisement. Okay? But if I tell you, keep off, can you even approach that tree? No. You cannot even, you are not allowed even to be close to it. So it is more. Restrictions. So look at the society. Islam came right away. Most of the Sahaba, what did they do? They stopped alcohol. They did not worship uh, statues. They stood against their parents. They told them, this is superstitious, does not make sense. They paid khumus. They gave rights to the women. He, may, he changed the way they eat. This food is halal, this food is not halal, this is dirty, this is not dirty. You come to the salah, there is wudu. You know how tough to have water in Arabia? Yet, you have to make what? wudu, you have to make ghusl. Friday, mustahab ghusl, that ghusl is wajib. You have to pray, you have to... Oh, it's a big thing. You have to pay khumuz, you have to pay zakat. It's lots of responsibilities. And guess what? They took it, and they able to move on those ignorant people all of a sudden they because knowledge is important in Islam and the Prophet always push us to get educated what did what did they do they went and they started translating books philosophy science just name it philosophy used to be science anyway so they brought them in and they start what they start getting instructors, non-Muslim instructors, to teach them. And we start seeing schools only about what? Sciences, philosophy. And you start seeing people invented chemistry. Because chemistry before uh, uh, Muslims used to be what? How to transfer stupid things into uh, gold. That's They used to call it chemia. Arab people, they start having labs, experiments. You start seeing algebra. Algebra because, because it's the, word, the, the Arabic word, al-jabr, okay? Uh, Al-Khawarizmi, we call it algorithm. Uh, just name it. Books for Arab people, used, they used to teach it in Europe for 200 years, 300 years. Like the books of Ibn Sina, Al-Qanun and others. Ibn Sina. Uh, change the society, why? Now compare this to our modern life. I give you an example. I don't know if you are familiar that the government in USA at a point prohibited alcohol. You know that, isn't it? You studied this in your history? You did not? Okay, I'm telling you. And I was uh, what, about 1920, I think. In 1920, the government decided to prohibit what? Alcohol. And anyone is dealing with it was either in prison they present so many, they imprison so many people. And they put advertisement, the disbenefits of alcohol, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? Did not work. <laughs> it took like 10 years, 13 years, did not work. And they went back to alcohol. And this is modern science, or media, or brochures, or so many things. Yeah, or to prison, yet people did not like it. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa one word, 
They said, hey, through Allah word, Fajtanibu. Stop it. How? Ah, oh, this will give you that the background behind it is not just the language. That the people were ready to change. They had a purity, we don't have it nowadays. Not to mention they had good attributes. So a person was chasing, uh, they say, uh, Jarad. What's Jarad in English? Grasshoppers. Or similar, uh, you know. Yeah, looks. So he said, hey, what are you doing here? Ah, I'm changing your neighbor. He said, because you said it's my neighbor, you're not allowed to touch. <laughs> That's in Arabic. Yeah, a guest. You, are, you I do not know you. You stop by. I'm your guest. Three days you stay in my house. I don't question who are you, what do you want. After three days we talk. They had virt virtues. It was very important. Sacrifice. Everyone is willing to sacrifice his life to protect Muhammad Amazing. He's one person. And guess what? Till now, you see some of those in some good Arabic people. Till now. You see these values. You see this kind of, uh, you know, attributes. <coughs> Generosity. Allah, Allah, you know, real company. Ruh al company. You are uh, eating. He has his bill and you have your bill. In Arabic countries, they fight who is going to pay, you know. <laughs> no, me. No, it's on me. I was like, it's generosity. It's like, they, we have this. Okay, we have it. No, Allah, nahna, he, they are two uh, people uh, married. Uh, married. She has his, her own banking account, his own banking account. You pay for your lunch. I pay for my lunch. You know, you know what? Today I will pay for your dessert. Oh, nice. <laughs> in Arabic, in, in real Arabic, uh, you know, culture, this is a big deal. <laughs> Yani in, in our terminology, Zaida min Sami Shahad Nuri, you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's a wrong, it's a bad uh, apple. Sacrifice. They will, are willing to give. They believed in hereafter. They were certain about it. And that's why they did not care. A person, they say, he was a praying, a rich person. He had a big garden. He was a praying. In the Salah, he did not get focused. No folk. No, he's not focusing. He came to the Prophet. He said, Oh Prophet, this Bustan al Ha'at, this garden, I want to give it fi sabilillah. Khalas, distributed on poor people. Why? I was praying and I kept thinking about it. Should I water this tree or not? Should I do this? I said, I don't want this. I want to just talk to Allah. They are very, they used to be very pure. Yani they were waiting for that light to change their life, but they had the capacity and capability to change. Not to mention that the Prophet himself, his personality is somehow a miracle. Somehow a miracle. Okay? Too many things, I mean, I cannot summarize it. But it, as you, are, you see, it is not just the Arabic language. The people also... People, they had what? Good what? Memory. Arab people, by nature, they did not write. They were illiterate, the majority. They were what? Illiterate. And because they are in a desert, an open area, they used to focus. They used to have good memory. Because they have nothing to dis distract them. They are not like us multitaskers. يعني هلا أنت بيكون عم تطلع على تيك توك وإنستغرام وتويتر يعني X that's an X anyway. Uh, news working وتشيكينج ما بعرف كله هذا at the same time. Guess what? You, the way you are formatting your brain is is a very bad man. You know you are, you don't have a clear thoughts and that's why when you come to the salah, it's not only the shaitan creating a problem you cannot focus. Yeah, Habibi, you are not a focused person from by default. <laughs> the Salah is just showing you that you are not paying attention. <laughs> it, it is a good remedy for you. Hey, wake up. You know, this is the only time you do one thing 
at, at only. You cannot look at your phone. You know, this is the first time you are detached from your phone. It's, that's why you feel I'm lost. That's one of the reasons. Arab people know. They used to have sharp memory. And that's why they used to memorize hundred, uh, a poet that has hundred verses, lines. Another poet, hundred lines. Another poet, you know. Why? They get used to it. You say something, they because they cannot write. It's like, you know, when you lose, let's say, your vision. You want to compensate somehow. How? You use your hearing. You are good in hearing. You pay attention. Others, maybe they don't pay attention. Because you are, you are busy in too many signals. You know, vision, hearing, noise. And him, hearing is a big deal. That's why he pays attention to things. Maybe he counts his step. You do not count even your step. You don't care about it. You see a blind person, he walks. Okay, I'm here. How do you know? I count the steps. steps. Or the sound of the step got changed. We don't want. So Arab people, they did not have the luxury to write things or read things. They had to depend on memorizing. Memorization help what? Them to memorize. Quran. And that's why sometimes you see khutbah, long khutbah, or memorized. Or a dua memorized. Allah, I'm going to do it ten times. Look, hold on a second, let me write it down. Even if it is a short dua, isn't it? No, they don't have that. So this is another advantage. And definitely, we have also the location. You are talking about Middle East, Mecca. Who comes to Mecca? Christians, Jews, because it's the place of Abraham. You get connected to other civilization. You spread the message to other countries. Till now, Middle East is a, the best place for struggle. Okay? So it is a hub. You have trade between uh, East, West, and just name it. So some other factors, you can figure it out. And by that, we see the advantage of having the Qur'an what delivered to that area in addition to, the, in addition to the heritage of Abraham. It's very important. It's a continuation. The last one is if I am not Arabic guy, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna be convinced that Qur'an is a miracle? Who said you have to know the language in order to know whether it's a miracle or not? Yani, halla anti kill al Arab people, they know, understand the miracle of the Quran. Yani, mashallah alayhum. Ma half of them live in la la land. Okay? La 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 land. You think they understand this? You go ask the experts in the language. They will tell you. When the expert in the time of the Prophet, they said, hey, this is a miracle. It's good enough for you. It's like you tell me, this is a priceless ring. I go give it to everyone. Uh, yeah, plastic, you know. If a person knows about jewelry, what he's going to say? Ah, where did you get this from? So you go to expert people or regular ordinary people? A big, important, a big, important, significant book like Quran. You are not going to ask anyone whether it's a miracle or not. You take it to those who are expert. And not just one or two or three. No. Not to mention that the Quran it challenged the Arab people. Give me one surah, one surah, one chapter similar to, this, to the chapters of the Quran. One. You know a chapter like Surah Al-Kawthar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أعطيناك الكوثر فصلي لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر. I challenge you to give me one of that. Not because of its linguistic, not because it because of it is language, not because of it is eloquence, not because of this or that. Because also it has deep meaning, and that's why you see a guy. They say he said الفيل وما أدراك ما الفيل له ذنب قصير وخرطوم طويل يعني. It's like he has a short tail. بتطلع هيك بتعرف. While in Atainak al Kawthar, you you will it will take us like one week to to get into details. So the beauty of the Quran, the miracle of the Quran, is not just in the terminologies and the phrases and its eloquence. Also, it is in the deep meaning. 
So we stop it here. If you have any questions, more than happy to help. Any questions?